Hello, Trouties. It's Friday. It's 1 p.m. I've been doing a really weird thing with all social media. I've been doing um Insta. Oh, I have to press a button. Sorry. I've been doing um Insta stories all the time over on the Manic Trout Instagram, and I've been very sing songy. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, I'm coming to you live right now from the Manic Trout Studio. If you don't know who I am, my name is Sierra Bailey. I am the maker, designer, everythinger here at Manic Trout. It's very confusing. People always say. Oh, so you're a jewelry designer. You don't make the jewelry. I'm like, oh, honey, I got the calluses to prove. I make the jewelry too. So I do the things here at Manic Trout, including on Fridays, I go live to share tidbits behind the scenes about the jewelry, what life of a designer is and maker is like, and the ultra fun ones, style and fashion advice. So today is kind of in that direction. I very often take necklace selfies. And share them on my social media. It's how I show my jewelry and they look pretty. So it's a pretty thing to share and it shows the necklace and it shows it on a person. I am a short person, but still like you can get a sense of scale. Now I've had a few trouties that have talked to me about these over the years and they I think are like, oh, I wish I could take more of those or how do you take those? So I thought that this week I will share with you how to not only take, but part of the secret of a good necklace selfie is how to edit the photo because it's really two parts there. I am going to start out by saying that there are two types of necklace selfies. There's the selfie with your face in it and then there's the selfie that is just which I'm kind of known for, like this shot right here, which you can see one up in the little uh, corner of my profile photo there is one of those shots. So I'm gonna kind of talk about both of them, but I'm gonna really show you how to do this one. So to take, mainly, let me also preface that with, I prefer this one because I work in my studio all the time and very rarely do I like have makeup on or feel presentable really easy to do, even if you're not presentable, right here, right here. I'm gonna show you how to do it really well. All right, so if you are including your face in this, and because my phone is live at the moment, I'm going to use my iPad. It also will let you see better, okay. I like to do these, I'm often sharing them on Instagram. There's many different formats that things can be. On Instagram, you can post the wider format photo now. Facebook actually prefers those, but I've gotten kind of used to taking these in the square format. I like how they set up. I enjoy how it frames it. So I start out by using phone or iPad, whatever d device you prefer. Um, I, this is kind of an older one. I don't even know if this is what they look like with the camera anymore. Uh, in the square format, you of course want to make sure that it is flipped around to be showing your face in it. And I'm gonna try to do this so you can see like what I see. All right, so the most, Im closed it, sorry. <laughs> the most important thing to remember when you're taking a selfie with your face in it is that one, it's like, it, if you're taking it this way, it's like the backwards of what you're seeing in the mirror. So it will look a little weird to you. Like you'll feel weirded out by it and just get over that. The other, so it, to me, my face is not the same either way. So if it flips, it looks differently. And I'm always like, oh, that's me. And that's kind of weird. But if I'm taking a selfie of my face, I like to hold both hands out. I find that it centers it well for both formats of these photos and that it just makes it look better. And I actually would kind of straight on, maybe angle a little bit, take the picture. But again, it's like a straight on. I might even go up here a little bit because if you're doing this and you tilt your chin, it slims a little in here for those that want to work on that a little bit. So like this angle is way better. Never do it from this angle. You don't want to take your picture from down here. You'll be very unhappy with the results. So up here, slims, straight on is great. I like to sometimes tip my face a little bit. So like maybe, I'm trying to think of the best way. Can you see those? I don't know. So, you know, play around, put some makeup on, stand in beautiful light. You don't want to flash. That's not going to work for you. iPhones have wonderful, and most phones have wonderful cameras nowadays, but they're not really, like they're not designed for nighttime and low light. They are designed for natural light. Sometimes I'll even go outside magic hour. The best lighting is like dusk, right before dusk, right before it starts. It's like that filtered, beautiful, glowy sunshine light that's like right before dusk happens or in the morning, right after dawn. Aim for like that kind of light is ideal. Very bright overhead sunlight is 
pretty harsh and will give you a lot of shadows. So I try not to like go outside in the middle of the day, especially in Texas with its bright sunshine and do that. Um, but a nice filtered kind of indoor light. So for example, I shoot these videos not in front of the window, but kind of like there's a window right where these shelves end right here. So it's the natural light coming in that is then like getting to me, but is not putting me directly in the light from the window to create shadows. You do not want light behind you. So you do not want to stand against a window and have the window light illuminating because it will make your face in a shadow. You're much better to turn around and face the window. But like I said, it will be a little harsh if you're standing like right in front of the window. So like go right to the side a little bit and that will create better light too. All of these little teeny tweaks are gonna make it so if you're trying to take a pretty face of yourself, let's say in your favorite manic try necklace, you feel happy and confident with the end result, which then makes you want to share it with me so that I get to see it. It's like my favorite thing ever. So. Good lighting. Hold it right in front of you. Like I said, I like to actually hold it with two hands because I feel like it makes it more steady. If you have, I use a little like tabletop tripod to do these videos. That helps too. I never said this was going to be easy. I said it's going to result in a good picture. <laughs> uh, so these are all kind of like little things that you can start to try around. I also am a big believer of a little bit of makeup, like lipstick does make me feel a little bit better in the photos and wearing a color that looks good on me. All right. So those are kind of the basis of like how to get a good selfie. And I hope you include your beautiful faces because I love to see them. But what I really want to talk about is like how I do these shots. And when I finish talking about taking those shots, when I talk about editing, that will come back to both of them all together. Because, you know, a little selfie advice never hurt anybody. All right. When you are trying to take a picture of a necklace. This is me walking around, da, da 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 The necklace is kind of hidden by my collar. I chose a colored dress for a reason that I'll get to in a moment though. So you don't really see the necklace. In my everyday interactions, this is what it will look like. Like if I were working, like, you know, necklace peeking out, that's lovely. Not so much in one of those photos though, because you're trying to like show off the necklace and you want to, if I were taking like an outfit photo, I would probably leave it like that. Maybe do like a little peek or something, you know, to show more of it. But I would, I would leave it like of how I'm dressed. When you're doing a very like close up shot of one thing. So when you're doing like in here, you're setting up almost like an art piece, if you will. You are creating a scene. If you've ever been on a photo shoot, you have seen that the clothing and accessories are taped, tied, adhered, randomly like attached with like maybe a binder clip to make sure that it looks the best way possible in the photo. It has nothing to do with how it's being worn in real life. We are not talking about walking down the street and how you will have yourself. We are talking about how you will have the best photo as a result. So I love a good collared shirt for these necklace selfies because it actually creates a frame. I also have long hair and I like to keep my hair down down for a second and I actually like divide all my hair in the back and then just pull it all in the front walking around I would have like no hair in the back I probably would not walk around like that but for these necklace selfies it's like the abundance and opulence when you're showing an item like jewelry or like a good handbag or shoes like you want like opulence you want it to look as like ah oh, you know like that's luxurious you're you're creating a story and you're you know setting the scene so a lot of hair is often better than like no hair i've also found that the so the necklace selfies that I take that um, are the like like the most and that I enjoy the most, I have hair in them. I don't have a ponytail because sometimes when you see things behind it, it's a little distracting. I also follow the things that I said in the beginning like you would with, with all photo basics. If I make sure I'm in a properly lit area, I don't take these at night, especially, you know, using like a phone. Uh, they do wonderful in daylight, so I make sure I'm in good daylight. I do not have harsh shadows from standing in light wrong. I'm, of course, you know, not standing with light coming behind me. It would be facing me. I also will, like, I have big hair, so I, like, fluff my hair, you know. Like I said, this is not, like, <laughs> although I do fluff my hair before I go out because it's Texas and I have big hair, and that's awesome. But I absolutely, like, am just making everything look, like, a little bit bigger. Okay, another thing is that when you are taking a necklace selfie, you need to see the necklace. So you have to actually, I don't wear earrings for these. I have a lot of hair, so that's why. So, you know, you have the hair, you have the collar, right? Oh, look, that's starting to look better. We're starting to, you know, get more of this going. 
Now, here's a little secret. <laughs> I alluded to this in a photo earlier. Nobody be shocked. I'm not undressing. But for these photos, I actually like undo a button. And that's why often, like, boom, there's the necklace. If I were walking around, I would not undo the button. And I would not like go to work with a button down to here. But when I'm taking the photo, and in fact, excuse me, because you can actually see more of that right now on video than you would in the photo. The photo almost always ends like right here. So you're not even seeing that open. You're just making it so you're creating a frame. So you see how like already we have like the hair, we have the shirt that is, you know, framing the necklace really well. We're in good lighting. I am in this spot. I would like to point out I have a shadow from my chin down. So I would like try to move around so that the shadow is not there. That is caused I'm right underneath an overhead light. So again, this is why I'm saying that daylight you know, I'm on the video, so we have to sacrifice a little bit here. I'm not taking the most ideal area photo here. But I would want it so there was not a shadow right here on me, if possible. So I'd want more light coming this way, not necessarily this way. Now, when I, it's hard, you know, I had these visions of showing you this so that it was actually like you could see the picture, but I think it just creates bad video, so I'm not doing that. But I am going to show you a very important thing. The angle for which you hold the phone, device, whatever, is very different for the necklace selfie than it is for a regular selfie because for the most part, you're looking kind of head on at the camera. Maybe you're holding it up. The necklace selfie is never straight on. That does not result in a good photo. The necklace selfie, I'm going to show it to you and I'm going to take one. So you want it see how low I'm holding it it's like right in front you see that it's like right in front of the necklace and it is tilted down it is not head-on because that the my chest is tilted like your body is made so that you know there is an incline there so the it has to match that incline for it to line up well so you know what we've talked about with the lighting like I said not ideal but I'm doing this so you can see it so the lighting you line that up I'd probably open that a little bit more if you were not watching that, honestly, um, because you wouldn't be able to see that it was open to my navel and that would be a better photo, honestly. I don't know where my photos are. All right, so you then are gonna line it up in the square. Okay, this is out of focus, but you see how that shot is of that angle, right? So you're getting it better. The next thing you need to know is that you are probably gonna need to take like 40 of them, and I'm not joking. Like, it will take you five minutes I, one of my friends in high school said to me, you know what the secret of a great photographer is? And I said, what? And he said, they take a lot of photos. Like you take a lot of photos. Don't take one and expect it to be done. This one's not even in focus. Um, if you are on, I don't use like the Androids, but on the iPhone, while you have your window open to take the photo, if you have it all set up and it's pointed at you, and let's say you want to focus in on like this has the little quatrefoil or if there was an animal. I actually click on the animal so that it focuses on that and is not, you know, fuzzy on it. Or I like click on the jewelry to make sure that the focal point is zooming in. The phones don't really have macro, but you are like forcing the focal point to be like right on that piece of jewelry because sometimes on metals it would get focused it would like not be able to focus on that a little bit. I also try to be careful that, you know, I move myself around. So if I take like five pictures right here and then I move over here and then I'd adjust my shirt, like there's, you're not just taking a lot of pictures of the same thing. You need to like rearrange and take a picture. These are not easy things, but a little bit of work makes it so you have a picture that you're really proud of and it is beautiful. This is art people. Art is not easy. So I, I'm, con I'm conscious of like this catches the light. So I will like make sure that it doesn't blow out to white when I am taking the photo. I want to see the texture in it and the color. I don't want that to be white. And this is again why flash often does not work really well in these situations because you do have metal. Um, jewelry is, it's, it's, it's its own beast of taking photos. I do all of my own product photography in house and it has been, you know, it's taken me a long time to get to the point that I do it well. But yes, you are focusing on that. You are setting up your thing. You don't want to talk while doing it. <laughs> you know what else I do? All right, people always talk about my neck in these photos. And part of the reason why my neck looks good, this is like total insider secret. You see like how these tendons go and they like pop out a little bit. When you look at photos of like, let's say like Tiffany or Harry Winston or something, like the models, like these are like kind of engaged. Like you want 
it like helps I think it helps smooth things so I will like do that not that much but I will like play around with how that pops a little bit because I think it creates a better photo and I think it creates more visual interest so you know like these are the little tricks that you learn not a great this is an older iPad not a great camera on this one they have improved so much the new cameras I don't have the newest phone yet but it is very good yeah I can't talk with these these are not resulting but you know we're getting there so it's all about the tilt the presentation you want to make sure that you focus in on the thing you know like on this or on the jewelry to make sure that it's in focus you want to take a lot of pictures make sure your lighting is good and then once you get your favorite photo we're now gonna learn how to edit it because you are not done that is like that is I'm close it up that is the easy part of what we're gonna do I use a variety of tools to edit so I actually like the Instagram color editing more than I like the regular photo editing like I, I I like it has a few more options but I use a few apps and I think only one of them I pay for I'm not 100% sure so one of them is photo grid if you take your photo and it is in like a different it's not square and Instagram kind of cuts off sides and I feel like people go past it if it's too long. So I do try to post on Instagram in squares. But I use an app called Photo Grid, which it's either free or it's like a small one-time fee for it. And that, you can make grids. So you can put in like multiple things. When I do photos, I, I do use Photoshop. And I do, there are times that I actually take the, photo from my phone I put it in Dropbox and I open it on my computer and I use Photoshop because I'm very comfortable with it and for me it is faster but if you do not want to do that way and you'd like to use your phone in apps um, PhotoGrid is great for making collages and it's also really good to you can like put it into the like an oblong photo and put it in and it will make it a square and you can either blur the sides so that it takes like the image behind it and blurs it or white sides and uh, pro tip on that one if you are using that app when you're in the tools slide all the way over and shut off the watermark and that will go away so you don't have to use their watermark the next app that I use is color story and that is put out by the a beautiful mess blog and those girls and I only use one thing in this app I use the free part of the app and it has curves so if you use Photoshop and you're used to using curves this app has curves so that's really what I use to get the white space and to balance oh sorry we have a low battery to balance um, a lot of the colors for me if you're familiar with Photoshop and you have been looking for curves that app has it and the last that I use is Facetune a little more on the uh, narcissistic side of the apps but what I actually use it for again in Photoshop I use the uh, cloning stamp tool all the time that's like if I have like a blemish that's what I get rid of it with um, if I want to correct uh, you know like um, if there's like a line somewhere or I'm trying to get rid of something to me that is the fastest way that I do it and the Facetune has a patch tool that works pretty similarly so you know if there's like a blemish it easily gets rid of it I also actually when I'm working with it when I'm working with a photo that has a white background you can use that app to uh, you can there's like a, a whitener and a smoother and so it's sometimes using that really quickly helps me get if you take a white background photo and it's gray like in the corners you can use that app to fix it really quickly um, you do have to pay for that one but it's pretty inexpensive and I use it all the time it's also like has the things that you can do like plastic surgery on yourself and like get rid of lines and stuff like that so FYI <laughs> if you like to use those all right so I do those few tweaks like I'm cleaning up spots I'm sometimes you didn't realize you have like a dark fleck on yourself or something that will get rid of things like that or lint on your shirt you know I, I clean up the photo with either the apps or Photoshop I adjust the curves then I now if I'm in Photoshop I further go in and start playing around with all the different things but if I am using the Instagram app actually don't know if I have this can you get that on iPad what I usually do is I increase the brightness a little bit I increase the contrast a little bit 
because I'm trying to make the colors pop. You want it to be like a beautiful saturated photo. To me, those are the prettiest. And then I will adjust the saturation a little bit, but be careful. You don't want to go too far. It also, if you have, um, if your saturation is like, if it's like too much in the other direction, you can take it down and by a little bit. I mean, I will do this by very small increments. I am increasing and decreasing and you just play around. You get more comfortable with it. Those are the ones that I mainly use. Sometimes I will do the colors on the midtones and the shadows so that you will, like the whole thing will be kind of tinted with like a purple or something. Sometimes that works really well too if you're using the Instagram app. And I enjoy working with that app. I think they do a great, I think they do, I, you can do a lot of really great things just with their own controls in there of the photos and the editing. But, you know, you need to have a, a really good picture to start. You have to have correct lighting so the photo's not grainy. You need to have it shot and framed, which you can adjust a little bit once you've taken the photo. But you need to have, like, your canvas set up. You need to have everything where you want it to be and to be a visually interesting photo to start. Lighting, visually interesting. You then need to make sure that everything is in focus, you know, so it's a well taken photo. Again, these phones these days do all of this. And then after that, it's about just, you know, the details. You're cleaning it up. You're adjusting the colors a little bit. You're making those colors pop. And that is how you get a beautiful necklace selfie photo. I would like to add that I would really enjoy if you guys go out and get all inspired, which would be awesome, and take necklace selfies, share them in the comments of this video. How fun would that be? And then we can see your necklace selfies and how you've been. And if you start, these videos stay up. And I am alerted when the comments come on and I love to keep the conversation going. So if you are trying to take a necklace selfie and you're like, something is not working, write it out there. It, it, you send me a message if you don't want it to be public, but even if I don't know how to help you, we may be able to help each other. And that is a really cool thing about Facebook community. So please share those necklace selfies that I know you're pumped to go take now. And I want to see them. And I hope that this taught you something. I hope that this was a, an interesting thing for you to learn. If you liked this format today let me know because i'm always curious of, of what you do and do not like of the videos um i would love to teach you more things too because i've picked up some knowledge here and there and i would love to share it with you i am live on facebook every friday at 1 p.m central and like i said the videos stay up so if you go to the manic trout facebook page please follow and if you click on the video tab, you will see all of the videos. This one's number 20. Can you believe I've been doing these for 20 weeks? It's crazy. But I love sharing them with you and I love to talk to you about, you know, the behind the scenes and what it's really like running a business these days. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I'm here for you, Trouties. Yes, I am. And like I said, if you're not following on Manic Trout Facebook page, please do. I'm also on Instagram where you can see my fun Insta stories. And of course, all of my jewelry is available at manictrout.com. I will see you here next Friday, I hope. Have a wonderful week, Trouties. Bye.